All right, guys, welcome back to my work in progress here on the 100 scale Gelgoog kit. Now, what I'm gonna be doing for the painting of this, as I think I may have mentioned before, is I'm going to be uh, attempting the Max Watanabe painting style technique, sort of, and I should also explain too that my understanding of this technique at this point is pretty rudimentary. I understand kind of the basic idea of it, but the minutia of it, it, I don't, I'm not certainly no expert on it. So if you guys know more about it and if you see me doing something uh, wrong or missing a step or something like that, do feel free to let me know. But uh, this is just going to be kind of a basic first attempt, see what it's like, and then I'll try to figure it out maybe further in future uh, builds. But for now, I know that usually it constitutes a black base or sometimes a mahogany, anyway, a dark colored base. Sometimes then also including a coat of silver in there as well too. Now, I've not done that underneath the black, it's just it's just the black primer on here at the moment. Uh, but what silver is used for is for the actual physical chipping, so when it comes to the weathering, uh, it'll actually physically uh, scratch some of the paint off, exposing some of the silver underneath, so it just kind of gives the actual kind of realistic look of that. Uh, I'm not quite that bold yet, so I'm not trying that on this kit, but uh, on a few trick, yeah, I guess I'll try that. And then before you get to doing your base colors, you're doing sort of a kind of rainbow layer underneath that where uh, the colors that I think he typically uses here are red, yellow, blue, and green. Uh, I'm not sure, he probably uses custom mixed ones. I'm not sure exactly what colors, but the ones that I'm gonna be using here are uh, number 64, yellow, green. So it's, these are all just gonna be kind of, not exactly the just red, yellow, blue, green. They're a little bit different colors. Um, character blue for the blue, number 110 for the yellow, character yellow, and then for the red, uh, red matter. I thought about using character red, but this one looks a little bit brighter, probably a little bit better uh, for these purposes, but uh, we'll see anyway. So uh, it's just a matter of just kind of dabbing these on, and sometimes I know he uses the airbrush, and sometimes he uses just a paintbrush to do it by hand. I'm just gonna be doing it by hand, just basically kind of randomly dabbing these colors all over the kit so it gets a very kind of splotchy colorful rainbow look to it all over the place and then we'll put our main colors actually the actual colors that we're going to be painting the kit on over the top of that and that'll give it kind of an interesting kind of base look so anyway ain't nothing to it but to do it and i guess we'll start off with the darker colors and i think i'll probably go back and forth i'll do like blue then green then red then yellow and then probably go back with a little bit more red and so on and so forth uh, I also should mention I've got this thinned a little bit with some Gaia Notes Brush Master uh, thinner, but yeah, it doesn't need to be that thin, actually. All right guys, here is how it's gonna be looking for now once all that is done. I know it looks a mess and you know, I'm, it's an experiment. I'm not sure if it's really right. It certainly doesn't necessarily look exactly like what Max does, but I see a lot of variation every time I see him do it. You know, it's slightly different and I'm sure if we were to ask him, he would say there's no right way to do it. Uh, but I don't know, anyway, so here's just an attempt at that. It's basically the idea is there so you know we'll, we'll run with that so here's the colors i'm going to be using after thinking a lot about the colors and really not being sure about it i think the main color is going to be red for which i'm using number 327 uh for mr color red fs11136 or the u.s air force uh, thunder what is that thunderbirds red color yes it's kind of hard uh, to see very small print on that number 44 that was much easier tan for a secondary color for the armor uh, then for the inner frame we're gonna use german gray for the frame parts what little bit of frame that shows basically like on like the back of the knees kind of that's really kind of about it for the most part uh, and then for the feet we're gonna use field gray number 52 and maybe a couple of the little bits on there we'll use that field gray all right guys so going along here i finished the first coat of red and that's looking pretty cool i mean i like the 
kind of uh, shadowy look of that, but I'm going to go over everything with a second coat as well too here in a little bit, but uh, the red so far is done and at the moment working on this color, uh, I'm not really sure this is quite the right color here for this and it's looking very like a much like a flesh tone kind of color, which is a bit odd. So I think I'll use this for all like the first coat and then when I go over the secondary color with the, the second coat. Uh, I think I'll probably switch to something a little bit more like a sandy brown kind of color, something a little bit darker, a little bit more yellow, rather than this kind of like basically flesh color as, as it's looking, this tan color. But everything's looking all right so far. It's kind of hard to know because with this whole process, it's not really going to look quite right until the very end, until everything's done. So at this point, it's kind of hard to judge. And I should also mention that at the moment, I'm actually painting these colors without any thinner. I know that may sound kind of odd, but that's just because when I've seen Max paint, a lot of times uh, the paint, I don't really know how to describe it other than this, that the paint looks very dry. Uh, a lot of times when I've seen him painting, it doesn't look very thin at all. So I... I'm suspecting that sometimes he does paint without thinner, so I'm trying it basically to see how it looks. Uh, so far, I think it's going okay. I mean, obviously, you can see some texture there, uh, but I think, well, we'll see anyway. All right, so here is how it's going after the first coat is done for all the main colors there. Like I said, you can really see still some of the under colors, the rainbow colors, all coming through a little bit, especially in the tan areas. But as the second coat goes on, obviously it's going to be getting thicker and we're going to see less of those colors coming through. So the trick is to kind of not have it be too thick, but I'm not sure how I'm going to be able to avoid that. So we'll have to see how this is looking still after the second coat of paint. But I'm going to go ahead and start on the second coat and then uh, we'll see how that's looking. All right, after coat two, everything's uh, a bit more brighter, but you can still see kind of some of what's going on there with like the undercoat. I think, I don't know, anyway, I'm not exactly sure how this is going to turn out at the moment. I'm a little bit unsure, but I guess we'll just have to keep our faith and I'm gonna go put some top coat on this, get to the panel lining and I think like the panel lining and once we get some like wash and uh, filtering on this, I think that's also gonna help out quite a bit with the overall look. But uh, for now, let me get some top coat on this and then we'll see how it's going. Next, just gonna work on some of this panel lining here, uh, which fortunately, because of the design of this kit, doesn't have a ton of panel lining, so this should be pretty quick to do the panel lining on it. And then uh, we'll get to the decals. And I'm using black panel liner now, uh, but I think probably for like some wash later, I'll use some brown uh, to dirty this up a little bit more. 